Hey, welcome to the Dr. G Show. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. G and the boss. Yes. Holly Hajajina. They're over that. Thank you, <laughs> They're Dr. not. G. We can't. My name is Holly Hajaj. At episode 150. Episode, we can get your episode right. one too many. <laughs> that's, only four, that's only four more episodes, and we get your name right. Mm, mm. Okay, so Holly and Deb, good to see you guys. So tonight we're talking about uh, skin again. So our theme this month is skin. Do you know what the theme next month is? Um, something else boring. The no, vagina, I right? So it's China. We are so, going to talk about what's below the belt mm -hmm. for women. Next week we're going to talk about third base stuff and how it's great to have a dirty, dirty vagina. You just love to say things that are going to stir those conservative folks up, don't you, Dr. G? I told my patient, I said, you want a dirty, dirty vagina. And she's like, I don't think she was expecting that. But. There is, some of you may know what he's referring to. Yeah. There is some actual science behind this, not just inappropriate There's talk. always science behind my inappropriateness. <laughs> always. Okay, so today though, or this month, our theme for July is skin health. The skin. So last week we talked about skin cancer in the sun and some healthy alternatives for sunscreen, that kind of thing. But today, we're going to talk about things like dry skin and then autoimmune dry skin, which is like eczema and psoriasis or atopic dermatitis. And then we'll also talk about bug bites and uh, follicularis polaris. It puts the lotion in the basket, Deb says. See, that's Deb, what Deb's... tell us more. Deb's so cool. That's what I'm talking about. It puts the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again. Do you know what that's from? Wow, is that Silence of the Lambs? Oh my god, you actually know. That's awesome. It puts the lotion. Oh, that's what it's from. Yeah. Oh, Deb was, was making a Silence of the Lambs. Yes, I was 90% oh. sure you did not know that joke. I didn't get Deb's, but I got yours when you sang oh. the song. It puts you the were, lotion in the basket. It's because you were exuding that creepy vibe. I know. That you're so good at. I got a good creepy vibe. <laughs> I like to work that a lot. Especially on first dates. I like to really, uh, kind of like... Turn them off immediately. <laughs> I don't know. That's, I don't know where I'm going with that. So, what kind of questions do you guys have about skin? Any any others? Were you with us last time? What are you struggling with? Um, skin is it issues. Dandruff. Oh, dandruff's a good it's one. Been a, it's been a weird day. Isn't that a boot store in Wichita? <clears throat> dandruff. Dandaran. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who named their store Dandruff? <laughs> Want hey, let's free name free our attention. boot store Dandruff. <laughs> True. Alfredo. I don't want to say anything, but I think most people that wear boots have dandruff. I think you're Is making a generalized statement. It wouldn't be a generalized statement if it's true all the time. But it's not true all the time, so it's a generalized statement. It's not a stereotype if it's true every time. So. Yo, just checking in. Thanks. Who's that, Alfredo sauce? Alfredo. Dang, Alfredo. Do you know him? I do know Alfredo. No. We talk about this every single show. Alfredo and I are like this, and you never believe us. Have you ever went painting with Alfredo? 100 times, okay? Until you've painted with another man, <laughs> you don't know <laughs> that, man. that man. So, let's first talk about dry skin. Dry skin, who has dry skin? Well, put your hand down. You're supposed to be telling them how to solve it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're here. You're just like, yeah, tell me more about this dry skin. <laughs> so dry skin, so you, what, what's the largest organ of your body? Your skin. All right. Okay. So you know that. So <laughs> your skin is the largest organ of your body. Why, what defines it as an organ? What? Damn it, I'm gonna need some more tea. <laughs> that doesn't look like tea, Dr. G. Okay. An organ is a systematic group of cells that join together to create a common function. I get these little bumps on my skin that are whitish. Oh. They don't go away. Derm said something about it being related to hair follicles, but really didn't give me any solution. It's Fularis picularis. Urine, it's on our list. We will talk about that today. Yes. 
And if you're lucky, we might tell you a solution to it. If you hmm. stay with us, if we, if you allow us to torture you for the next yes. 50 minutes. All right, um, so dry skin. Mm, but you were ta we were talking about organs. The skin being an organ. That's what right. What makes something an organ? I just said it's a collection. Of, <laughs> I had my little drink of tea. Okay. And then I said it's a group of cells that are similar that carry out similar functions. So one of the biggest functions your your skin does is, is your hair an organ? <laughs> I thought those were all dead. Hair is not an organ. Hair hair is a hair and nails are cells. Carrot the, keratin keratinite. Right, but those are products of the uh, skin. They're not living cells. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. Nope. So <clears throat> dry skin. So skin, one of its main activities is to produce lotion in the form of sebum to make your skin nice and soft and delicious, <laughs> right? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. What <laughs> the hell are you talking about? Skin, <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what are you, so what, gross. What's going it on here? It just sounds so gross. Like skin? your skin producing lotion. It sounds so <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> it's so gross. Ugh. Well, why does she have to put the lotion in the basket and put I the lotion on I am getting my lotion from Bath, Bath and Body Works. Not producing the, lotion. <laughs> our skin <laughs> is a lotion-producing factory. <laughs> right? Okay, okay. And if you cut up skin and you deep fry it, that makes pork rinds. But pig <laughs> tastes just like human skin. So if you like pork rinds, you like human. Um, You're a cannibal. You're a Do cannibal you know because you know that it tastes just like human skin. I have read that. This is going to be one of our more disgusting shows. So, this lotion factory that we have, <sighs> if it requires moisture or water, right? So, hey, there's Caitlin. Um, That's Katina. Oh, I can't read. I don't know. <laughs> Scrape it off bottle and sell little... it. That's disgusting, Deb. You can't be on his side with this. No, Deb gets it, right? <laughs> I scrape, like I'm not like gold member, I keep a little flakes of skin for later, right? But then you also can squeeze out some of that oil uh, and then you can save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. So, so, so the main constituent of that sebum or, or moisture is water. So if you have dry skin and the skin's job is to lotion up, moisturize the, the, the body, then why does it not have enough moisture? Because you're dehydrated. Damn it, that's right. But, but how does it make it into an oil though? Because that's not water. Well, because of oil producers. It has these glands that take the water in and emulsifies it with some slowly probably need to eat some fats. and some carrageenan. And then, yeah, fats, fats do it. And then it, it, it makes that oil. Because don't um, eating like omega-3s and eating salmon and fish oil, won't that make your skin kind of oily? Yeah, now I like to take the salmon and just put it on my skin. Yeah, okay. Because you like to smell like salmon. So I yeah, so especially like dogs. I mean, that's one of the things that like we know it for a dog. If your dog has all this dry skin or these <clears> little <throat> patches, well, they feed them essential oils or they, uh, not essential oils, uh, uh, omega-3s or lots of fish for your cats or dog. And then uh, their fur looks better. But they also need the water. But you need water. So then how dehydrated are is the average American? Can you just drink like... Could you just drink, like, salad dressing? I've done that for a day or two. <laughs> yes. So the lotion-y substance, oh. Oh. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yes. That's right. So. Okay. The average American woman will shrink two to four inches between 40 and 60 years of age. Because of dehydration. Because of dehydration. That is crazy. So, they so that's just dehydration in between the spinal discs? Right. Yeah, exactly. So like, you know, you think like grandma gets shorter because her bones are shrinking, but the bones are the same length. It's all these fluid spaces in between every single vertebra from the uh, uh, skull all the way down 
to your uh, toes. Yeah, but they don't just say you're 85 and you've shrunk. Drink water and that'll make it better. It's too late because... for that. Okay. It's water and mo mobility that creates the joint spaces, right? And yoga. That is the mobility, girl. Yes. Okay. Water and str and st yoga. stretch. Yeah, so yoga movement. and movement and stretching, right? Need. You got to create purpose with that. So. What about weight? What about what? What about osteoporosis being a factor with those tiny fractures? So osteoporosis makes the bones thinner inside, but it doesn't change the length of the bones. Okay. okay. Common misconception. <laughs> I, it, I am a humble learner. This is just humble inquiry from I a person with knowledge, but who can admit... Humility ever, ever at all, <laughs> ever. In fact, didn't you have like a trophy for the most humblest? <laughs> <laughs> I, have it on my, I have it on a bumper sticker. She has that in her dash of her car. <laughs> most humble. <laughs> and the way uh, that people cut her off, she's like, you're lucky I'm so freaking humble. <laughs> <laughs> that is so you. You would totally have... A license plate that says humble. Scott Spradlin is the most humble guy I've ever met. He is the humblest ever and the most ultra spiritual. Mm. Okay. So if grandma shrinks two to four inches, unless you're that age, then it's not grandma. Um, then it is not because of osteoporosis and her bone shrinking, right? Uh, it's just be from fluid, uh, fluid dysbasis. That means the average American, or at least female, um, is drinking so little water or so many diuretics that they are subclinically dehydrated to the point that they end up with shrinking two to four inches. And in the beginning, when you need water, your blood needs the water, right, to, to go around the body. I think it's four, not 400 liters. No, it's 400 liters of, uh, through the kidneys every day. Five liters? How many, how many pints of, or quarts of blood? I think it's five liters of blood. That's <laughs> liters. I think it's five quarts of blood, right? Because I think it's about the same as a Suburban. Is that right? That I sounds no right. What causes us, like I think it's in our 30s that we mm. really start losing the water. Right. What causes us to start becoming more dehydrated? So in the anterior hypothalamus in the middle of your brain, you have a, a, a series of hormones, and one's called antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic. I think that's in the hormone. posterior hypotha hypothalamus, uh, posterior uh, hypotenuse. Anti. So that's making you hold water. Yeah. So it's antidiuretic. So basically, it prevents the kidneys from excreting too much water. Okay. So you always have plenty of water. So whatever the body needs, it's like, oh, you're not getting rid of extra water. Okay. But. If we drink alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, and if our blood sugar spikes over 180, and sand, five, go on. Then we will excrete that sugar and the water, uh, leading to dehydration. So those bypass your antidiuretic diuretic hormone. Say it again. Alcohol and what else? Alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, and caffeine. High blood sugar. And sugar. Right, so diabetics, they kind of know they're diabetic in the beginning because they're just peeing all the time. So that constant peeing out more than you're taking in a country where you're already not drinking enough water then becomes subclinical dehydration. So eyes should get dry. Your mouth should get dry. The mouth of the lower body called the vagina should get dry. And then your skin gets dry. And then eventually your disc spaces all get dry. Because your blood wants that... <laughs> five liters of, of fluid to circulate hormones, neurotransmitters, and nutrients all around your body. So... And you get dehydrated. Uh, <clears throat> colon gets dehydrated, so you get constipation. So, Katina is correct in saying that you advise people to drink half their body weight in ounces... That's right. ...per day. I did that for a while and had to go to the bathroom so often that I had to go down to 64 ounces... Yeah. Or eight. Sometimes eight people are like, glasses. "Ugh, I have to flush my toilet all the time when I go poo." So the whole purpose of over drinking water is to flush out all the ammonia and toxins that we produce. So if somebody pees a lot, they probably should pee a lot. 
Will right? you continue to pee a lot? Because it really interrupts no. my work day. So it'll normalize because what happens is most of us will build up toxins in our body, like, like extra electrolytes and even waste products, and those are toxic to our brain. So then our body pulls those into tissue, and when it pulls it into tissue, it pulls water with it. So then you get edema in your legs and in your feet, and you get swollen. Mm -hmm. And then when you start drinking water, your body's like, oh, good, flush this crap out, and starts pulling stuff from the tissue into the blood, and then you're peeing constantly, but eventually it should normalize. Huh. The other thing is that, that goal of, do you know, it's half your body weight in ounces, and that was established in 1910 by Dr. Atwood and Samuelson, who created the USDA. And so they were creating these like formularies for us. And you... then the average adult, male and female combined, was 128 pounds, which means 64 ounces was half the oh, weight. Oh, that's the... where 64 ounces came from. That's right. Okay. So the average adult <clears throat> female was about 110 pounds. Well, if you don't weigh 110 pounds and you got a bigger pool, then you need more water for that pool. Okay. The average weight for a guy was 145 pounds. My high school weight, right? To I took uh, weight training in college <clears throat> and then found CeCe's Pizza and then it all went down. Oh, there, now we get to yeah. realism. I got to 180 through weight bodybuilding, uh, which uh, when we did competitions, I lost every freaking competition except for who could stretch the most <laughs> so i won how far i could get my fingers past my toe and everybody else won strength competitions mm, mm, good, so good, but good. i only started at 145 i was a pretty small guy right or so, <laughs> average 1910 kind of guy so and then i felt cc's pizza and then if you put pepperoni into ranch dressing like a bowl of ranch yeah. I would like to talk. It's amazing. Can I talk, please? Okay, so <laughs> let's say let's say someone is getting a lot of water from their fruits and vegetables that okay, they're let's eating. Say that. Do they need that much water? Well, you tell me. Ms. I'm going to say Science. no. Why? Because they're already getting it from Bam. their good diet. That's why grandma and grandpa didn't have to carry so water bottles. So really the half your body weight, yes, really the half your body weight in ounces is like a prescription for a bad diet. Right, yeah. And so, you know, I read this thing where it said you don't really have to drink that much because food has water in it. And so it's like, yeah, but if you're a bunch of people eating fried foods all the time and diuretics, you better be drinking more. So usually... There isn't one person who's watching this show right now, including us in this room, that is eating from the garden for every meal of the day. So. I eat mostly fruits and vegetables, though. Fruits and vegetables have 80 to 90% water in them. So the more fruits and vegetables I eat, the less I have to drink. But I will tell you this. I think I haven't been drinking enough for the last few weeks. Months. So Katina's talking about getting cramps in her legs. That isn't that an electrolyte issue? Although she's saying she gets it from drinking too much. From drinking too much. Too much water. Hmm. So usually, uh, usually like restless legs or leg crampings are usually subclinical dehydration. So dehydration. Oh really? Okay. But it can also be calcium, magnesium, or potassium. Most likely magnesium. Now, magnesium comes from green things. That's what makes uh, plant blood green. So our blood has a tetrahedral molecule with iron in the middle. It makes our blood red. Plants have the exact same tetrahedral molecule, but it has magnesium, which makes it green. Mm -hmm. So anytime you consume plant blood that's green, you are then releasing magnesium, and the magnesium helps maintain more water, but it also prevents muscle cramps uh, and then regulates your mood and PMS and all those kind of things. There's doc, Dr. Lamper. So. Number 10. <clears throat> Can think. you talk a little bit how so excess sodium intake affects our yeah. water intake as well? So, you know, I grew up in the generation where they said, oh, salt's bad, salt's bad. So then everybody started getting rid of salt because salt causes high blood pressure. Uh, but that's not true, right? Because... Uh, if you consume more salt than you need, your body will just piss it out. Unless you're not over consuming water to get rid of all that excess sodium. Then it pulls into the tissues. That's right. And then you get edema, right? And the cure for edema is drinking more water, not taking diuretics, which then makes you more dehydrated, which then pulls more in. So, 
that being said, you can eat all the salt you want if you drink enough water to pee it out. But it is not table salt. So then everybody stopped doing salt. And then the, people, the cardiologists were coming back and they're like, whoa, you have to have sodium. Because sodium and potassium run every single mechanism as far as electroconnectivity in the body. Your whole uh, nerve stimulation that controls muscles and glands and everything runs off sodium and potassium. So you have to have a constant source of that, although salt's very rare in nature, but sodium's in food. So adding salt to your food was never the problem. It's that processed food is what uh, uh, leads to 80% of the over consumption, consumption of salt. So if you wanna eat processed crappy foods, you eat way too much salt, and then you have to drink tons of excess water to pee it out, but we don't, we're dehydrated. We drink too much sodium and caffeine, uh, or, uh, sorry, caffeine and uh, mm. alcohol and uh, too much blood sugar, then basically we end up with too much sodium and then we pull that in and our blood pressure actually goes high to contract blood vessels with less fluid to get blood against gravity to the brain. So then the hypertension is actually a normal healthy process, but then they treat it with another diuretic like hydrochlorothiazide, which then exacerbates it even more. Can, Deb, does your mom have congestive heart failure? Because she's talking about over drinking water. Well, causing yeah. sodium depletion. Right. So if you drink too much water, so more people die from too much water than die from dehydration. Really? Yeah. So, but you got to drink a lot. So then people are just like chugging water all the time, which again, if you drink excess and excess and excess, you, you still have to pee that off. And so it might end up pulling more electrolytes off because it dilutes the, the blood. Okay. So then you can end up having problems with that, but that's the least likely problem except for people that are like in marathons or uh, jackass around drinking two liters of water. So you're saying too much water can actually deplete you of your electrolytes. Well, it dilutes it, yeah. It dilutes them. But a lot of doctors will say you have hypertension because you drink too much, but that's not true because if you have healthy kidneys, you pee it off. However, hey, there's Sierra. Sierra knows what's up. This She's a nurse. So then... If uh, somebody uh, has kidney failure, then they can't pee off all that extra water, then they get congestive heart failure, and then everything's super screwed from there. So that's the only hypertension mm. that is true pathology secondary to kidney dysfunction. Otherwise, if you just eat things and drink enough water, you just flush everything out that's excess and you should be fine overall. Okay. Yeah. So. Then when we go back to dry skin, the same thing. If we're subclinically dehydrated all the time, then you have to say, am I consuming more caffeine than I should be? So coffee, black tea. Does green tea count? Yeah, so green tea, yellow tea, no. white tea, no. all counts as water. So it won't be dehydrating. Right, right. So that's gonna add, prevent dry skin. Black tea is gonna cause dry skin. Oolong tea is gonna be more likely to. And then of course, coffee should equal dry skin. Yeah. Because coffee is 200, uh, 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine per cup, little cup, which is enough to cause significant dehydration. Yeah. Who out there is struggling with dry skin? Stop waving your hand. <laughs> I don't drink enough water. Who out admit there is suffering is... with herpes? <laughs> oh, you're not going to raise your hand for that one, right? Okay. We're talking about dry skin. Dry skin safe. Okay. Um, but I think this has been a good talk. It's been informative for me as well. Right. So next um, month when we talk about dry gina, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's skin. So, so um, essentially, caffeine, we're looking at caffeine, alcohol, sugar intake as our big three. Right. Because those bypass the anti-diuretic hormone, making us more depleted than we are. Then increasing your fluid intake or fruits and raw fruits and vegetable intake to get half your body weight in ounces of water a day. And then for most people, that gets rid of all your dry skin. Just hydrate. Water, water, water. Yeah. Also making sure you're getting some of those omega-3s in there too if you wanna be extra dewy. Word. So then what about shingles? Cause you asked about that earlier. I did ask about shingles, but first, before we segue, does anyone else have any other questions of their own mm. skin wise that you are struggling with? 
Because we have. Um, we talked about. Let's talk about the. What? How did you? Polaris Ficularis. Yes. Why don't we talk about that? I freaking love that term. Okay. So, so the red bump. Are those the red bumps? Dry skin here. Thank you, Katina. We're in this together. You I think, and I. I think that's Caitlin. Katina. Alfredo's oh, it is. Okay. chicken gets eczema. We are going to talk about chicken eczema soon, but you have to hang in there. Yeah. Right now we're going to talk about those weird bumps. So some people get bumps like this. So I used to have all these bumps. My sister had all these bumps and my mom had all these bumps. So of course it must be genetic, right? But of course only 1% of the disease is genetic because if you eat and drink and breathe and stress like they do, you will get what they got, right? So mine's all gone. Feel that. That's buttery smooth. Jet and hairy. Hairy, yeah. <laughs> Just like a baby's butt, except oh, it's very not, hairy. Yeah, that's not smooth. Smooth as an old man's <laughs> butt. So, the term follicularis polaris is this uh, like chicken skin, uh, kind of like um, little bumps on the back of your arm. So, when I was a kid, they were like, oh, it's genetic, right? Deb, did you have them on your arm or elsewhere? I'm on my eyeballs. Don't necessarily have to say where if you are not comfortable. Oh, so then if she doesn't answer, we assume it's an uncomfortable. It's on the vulva. <laughs> <laughs> I have them in and around my <laughs> buttocks area. Well, some people get them on their butt too. But basically, okay. there's a couple things. There's one, dry follicles, which in the treatment is water. But the other one is the, the oil part. So, uh, omega-3s... If you're deficient, you tend to end up with these kind of really hard follicles because, like you said before, is that a big chunk of what you do to make your skin all smooth and soft is you have oils from your diet plus water to hydrate that, and then you basically make this giant uh, lotion factory with your body. So <laughs> Sorry. So. That's the gross part. So then we need these omega-3s. So the <laughs> average American... Uh, for every one omega-3 that we consume that's anti-inflammatory disease reversing, we consume 40 times the inflammatory. So if you look at the 2,000 pounds of food the average American eats every year, uh, the least amount of all the food that we consume is fish, which is the omega-3s. And so most countries, they 85% of the population lives near the coast, they eat the fish and plants from the ocean, they don't have to figure this out. But Americans, we consume more coffee by pound then we do fish by pound. Fish is the least amount of food that people eat. In fact, most Americans are like, oh, I hate fish. I'm like, oh, well, you hate feeling good, right? <laughs> because one serving of cold water fatty fish, like salmon, tuna, halibut, macrocod, sardines, is just as effective as one full strength ibuprofen for getting rid of pain and inflammation without killing your liver and kidney in the process. So, so you, De sorry, Deb, well, he was sorry. just talking about omega-3s and how important they are. You did not miss much. Did you ever see that movie where the woman kept interrupting the man? <laughs> did you ever see that movie where the man kept talking was, and people couldn't get their questions answered? I thought it was called 1950. Uh, <laughs> yes. 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 Mm. All right. Mm. So, uh, so then the way that you get rid of those basically is omega-3s. Hey, there's Rebecca. So, what, Deb, what kind of instruction did you get for yours? For your bumps, probably eat a bunch. Sand of fish. them off with some sandpaper. You just buff them up. I get those too. Two twenty grain. She said she had them on the outside. Oh yeah, some um, people get them, just, especially right here too. But then she's two twenty grain. <laughs> <laughs> just pumice yourself, Deb, and quit complaining. No, I'm just kidding. Thirty thousand RPM sander, <laughs> two twenty grain. <laughs> Done. Then you don't have to eat fish. So is it just eating, what about exercise? Would exercise and a sauna and, and some of these Ooh. detox things that we've talked about? I would think they make them worse because your body's trying to detox, like your organ is one of your greatest detoxification systems. But if the, uh, if the uh, little fla uh, fluid factories are all dried up, then they're not excreting all these, all these things, right? I mean, you produce hormones all in your skin too. Like it's shutting all those factories down. So hydration mm. and oil healthy oil so a disc sander <laughs> not only <laughs> do you need something like omega-3s but where did the fish get them from from the plants though from the G. plants that they eat. small from the plants ones in eat the ocean. plants <laughs> are you talking shit from the plants <laughs> okay 
I've heard, I'm sorry, we've done this show so many times, I've heard these things a lot. Four so years. if you have not heard this before, I apologize. Are you getting sick of the same <laughs> answers? I'm like the okay. mechanic who's like, Dr. G, uh, I keep running out of oil and uh, uh, my engine doesn't work. What should Why I do? Why don't you put some oil in it? <laughs> Where do you think the <laughs> car's got the oil? Well, Dr. G, I didn't put enough oil in it for a long period of time and then it's still locked up. What do you think I should do? <laughs> Yes. I'm that uncomplicated. Okay. All right. Okay. So essentially, we're saying for the white bumps or the whoa, red bumps. Whoa, 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 whoa. I said white or red. I did not say kind Caucasian. Of or, yeah. Anyway. So. He's always got to take it there. So. I didn't make a drug reference yet. That's <laughs> true. You've done well <laughs> thus far. I've been trying hard. So for the red bumps or the white bumps yeah. that are weird, you need to have, you're saying essentially more omega-3s and continue drinking water. It's the same yep. thing for dry skin. Same thing. It's just dry follicles. I still feel like I would want to rub them off. Whoa, you need to come in. Because look, mine, I used to have that like crazy when I ate crap and didn't drink enough. I drank tons of Dr. Pepper and ate crap all the time. I, they were horrible on the back of my arm. And then now, <clears throat> buttery soft like the butt of an old man. So, Deb, what is one thing, Deb, and the rest of our audience that you could do to increase more essential oil, essential oils, omega-3s in your diet and water? What if you just went swimming? That's going to dry out because all the chlorine. Mm. Chlorine dries out the skin. And when we heat, you know, the air is actually 60% water. Did you know that? What is? The air. The 60% water. So when we have uh, air-conditioned houses where we control that uh, hydration of the water, of the, of the air, then we can actually cause dry skin that way too. I'm telling you, in the wintertime, it mm -hmm. is horrible. My whole face dries up. Yeah. My eyes stick at night. I can't move. Is that why top. you have all those wrinkles? Uh, I'm just, damn, rude. girl, are you tripping? All right, calm, calm down. It's true. I'm just, no, you don't. Okay. I'm teasing Sarah you because you don't. Sarah has a question. All right. What about if you only have really bad itchy hands and forearms with little flesh-colored bumps? Is that dry skin? No, that's some kind of irritation. So you'll see that sometimes when people have, like, uh, they carry boxes, uh, they'll have all these flesh-colored bumps all over uh, their forearms. So that is most likely going to be direct... Uh, contact with something that's just inflammatory, but not enough inflammation that it causes things to be red and increase blood flow. It's okay. not necessarily allergenic, just irritating. Let me ask you something for Deb, because she says she's sensitive to oily fish. Could she just put like coconut oil on her skin? She's not. She just hates fish. <laughs> she's so American. <laughs> well, you could do algae. That's what the fish eat. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Algae, is, algae omega-3s is now a product because yes. people are so anti-fish or vegan. But and, could um, you put something topical on, though, that right, would right, still right. help? So look. Why not essential oil? Push comes to shove. You can use any healthy nut seed oil. Like, I love a Laffy oil. So even though I drink pretty well and hydrate and stuff, I still put, like, um, everyday shea lotion I put like a little bit of uh, eucalyptus and lemon oil on my feet and rub now that after the bath. Now we know where the soft skin is from going. You have a moisturizing regimen. I do. Metro. I know. Okay. I gotta keep okay. just rough enough and just pretty enough <laughs> that I'm still appealing <laughs> to women my age. She said you're the one that showed her the test that said she was sensitive. To fish oil? Fish? Well, that's probably true. you doing your patients wrong on this show. No, so you can use lotion. <laughs> Just fish oil. But everybody can eat sardines. Everybody. <laughs> All right. So, so anything else on those? On dry skin and bumps. Let's we do dandruff real quick. Dandruff's common. Right. Isn't that dry skin? Dandruff, well, I don't know. I had hairdressers that said it was because of... No, because people think it's wet skin, but I think it's dry skin. It's caused by the shampoo. Is that what you're going to say? That's right. We dry out our hair by washing all the oils off our scalp. So the solution is first don't cause the problem, which means don't... 
Don't wash your hair. Wash your hair. That's exactly right. I'm glad you said it. Gross. You're so gross. Ew. That is a. Do you know that is, Do you wash your hair? That is a conditioner factory. No. Oh, right. Yeah, all those little follicles. I do are not it all wash work. my hair every day because it dries it out. Yeah, but I do right. wash my hair. Ew. It's so <laughs> 90s. You're washing your hair with soap? Here we go. He's going to talk about how he hasn't washed his hair in like 10 years. In 10 years. And look, this this isn't hairspray at this point. This what is... are you putting in it for product? Oh, so I put gel in hairspray. <laughs> I put like a little bit of gel like this. Try to keep it off my scalp. And then I take my hair dryer and I put it on cold and put it up here so it doesn't dry my scalp. And then I do a little bit just to keep that little bit of poof. And then, because I'm all I am is just a hairdo at this point in my life. Uh, and so then, if I want to wash it out, all I do is take a shower and let the water wash out it with a little bit of friction. That gets rid of all the hair cells, or all the uh, dead hair cells and all the dead skin. Oh, uh, sorry. Has anybody taken this journey? Yes, there, nobody's from gonna hair wa Anybody in the audience taken the journey from hair washing with shampoo and conditioner to nothing. That's what I want to know. You know how long it's been since I washed my hair? How stinky were you through this process? Like two years. No, it doesn't stink. You're still washing your hair, but with water. I had a patient come over <laughs> that owns these hair places. She came over and smelled my hair when I was telling <laughs> her this. And she's like, your hair doesn't stink. I'm like, I still wash it. It's just with water. Is that considered washing? Yeah. Or just rinsing. Well, rinsing. You rinse out all the debris and the bad stuff. He does have nice hair. Uh, that's your one compliment you get for the show. Did tonight. someone say that? No, I Are just. Are you said, saying a compliment to I me? I said he has nice. Oh my God. Thick hair. Her boyfriend is doing her wonders. Look how <laughs> nice she is now. What? You've always I'm, been so mean. I'm just naturally sassy. Okay. Does he know that? <laughs> or no. She, or she? Don't tell him. <laughs> she. <laughs> All right. So. Okay. So. All right. Here we go. Another one. My she son, didn't... he doesn't use soap either. He doesn't Boom. smell either. Boom. See? Plus, I want to take that plunge, but then I don't like how greasy it no, starts No, he didn't use baking soda. We have a friend that she has thick, black Spanish hair. She stopped washing it, and her hair got gross, oily. So then she uh, didn't come to my birthday party because she's a jerk, and she blamed on her hair. But then her husband showed me a picture, and I was like, yeah, I'm glad you didn't come <laughs> to my party because I would have made fun of you. And so then she read online that you could use baking soda, and that basically helps normalize stuff without messing it up. And then after a while, she doesn't have to use baking soda anymore. Baking, you only need that little short term because what we do is we wash out the oils and our scalp tries to overproduce. And then if we stop, we're overproducing. So we have to stop causing the problem and allow the body. That's like saying, well, to do God's got does. this all screwed up until I invented this conditioner and then I solved God's problem. But what if you want your scalp to smell like lavender? Then put lavender love. oil on your hair. Take lavender. Go like that, like that. Yeah, right. And you're in a relationship. Your hair can smell like it's, crap. It doesn't matter anymore. You can give up. It does matter. You can just give up. I don't want to give up. So just put Babe, lavender. I don't want to give up. <laughs> Babe. So you could put a little bit of lavender in water, in a little bit of a uh, glass water bottle with the spray thing, and then just go ch -ch 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 and make you smell pretty. All right already. Without causing problems. As much as I wash my hair, I'm pretty close to it. How often do you wash your hair? Like once a week? I go as long as I can go. So roughly, That's probably roughly, yeah. What she once, said. twice a week. So I, and then, now again, I it's easy to tell you guys this stuff. Sierra, what does she say? I say? want somebody to try it. What does Who's she say? willing to try it? What does Sierra say? She said, you rinse it. You That's, bet. That's right. So Sierra should do this too. We should have a challenge. The dandruff challenge. It's not dandruff. So when I used to have dandruff all the time, uh, and then <clears throat> I stopped washing my hair and all the dandruff went away because I was causing the dry scalp by washing out the oils and then more dandruff. So then I washed it even vigorously. Like I'd wash it twice sometimes 
to get make sure I didn't have dandruff. And the more I was doing it, the worse it got because I was my own problem, which is pretty typical of all men. That's his root cause analysis. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, so that's dandruff. And if you don't wash your hair, look, no gray, none. Your hair is turning kind of a slate color. Shut it down, like that's not true. It is, tr it is true. <laughs> and actually, I can see some gray. It's lightning. I don't know why it's lightning. <laughs> it's turning like a slate color. Mm. So, you, that's a whole different show. Which Maybe we need to talk about that. What? We'll talk about when we... Hair age, graying. Aging gracefully uh, in October. Okay. All right. Any questions at this <clears throat> point? We have talked about dry skin bumps, red bumps, neutral colored bumps, white colored bumps, Racism. and dandruff. We're ready to move forward. What about the shangles? <laughs> it just seems like a random... Bo shangles? Bo shangles. <laughs> Mr. Bo gonna... shangles. I was thinking the same thing. Mr. Bo shangles. Um, does anybody know anyone who has shingles or who has had shingles? Uh, if you do, post their names. Do we want to go there yet? Does it really tie in with this? Yeah, it does. What about my crepey skin? We still didn't really That's finish talking about that. That's just dry skin and low oh, okay. vitamin C. Right. Vitamin C makes strong skin. Vitamin C is from fruits and vegetables, not supplements. The more fruits and vegetables you eat, the stronger your skin is for the longer period of time with hydration. But the average American eats one fruit or vegetable a day. Thus, they should not be making a bunch of vitamin C or have vitamin C, so then they make <laughs> Can they just see collagen, antioxidents? Does it have to be vitamin C? They're all trying to do a bunch of bone broth instead of, so they don't eat the fruits and vegetables. <laughs> and then they end up with crepey skin anyways. And then they get like all... Does uh, it have to be vitamin C or can it be any, any antioxidant? No, vitamin C. You have to have vitamin C. Vitamin C makes collagen. Vitamin C. Water and omega-3s. Yeah. That's what you need for your skin at this point. And did you know almost every other animal makes vitamin C in response to stress except for humans? That's weird. We make sugar instead. <gasps> so we get fat and diabetic. Other animals get healthier with stress and overcome. Isn't that messed up? Yeah. We're kind so of messed up anyway. We have the We're gene. pretty much a mutation. We have the gene for it. But when uh, primates split off, uh, then the uh, species that we started coming from genetically, they stopped for uh, turning on that gene. The other primates did. And then it ended up with us and a couple apes and chimpanzees that don't make uh, vitamin C. But the rest of them huh. do. Isn't that crazy? It's a crap shoot. So then the question is, can we turn on that gene through the CRISPR process? And the answer is, probably. Okay, <laughs> so guess what? While then, you talked about all of that, yes. we have had two people say that they have had shingles. Hold please. Sarah, both her girls got shingles in elementary school and the doctor didn't know why. Damn. And Carol has had shingles as well. I believe we should talk about shingles now. Shingles or shangles? Is shangles the past Dr. tense? Dr. Bo shangles. shangles. Dr. Bo shangles. So shingles are... Oh. What? Can you repeat the combo with vitamin C? Vitamin C, water, and omega-3. Was that the combo? I think so. That solves all your... Vitamin C, water, dry skin. and omega-3s. Problems. And don't wash your hair. <laughs> with wa you only with water. Yeah. Good, so, good luck with that. With shangles, uh, shingles is just chicken pox of the nerve. What? That's right. And chicken pox is part of a family of viruses called the herpes virus. Can you only get shingles one time, like with chicken pox? Because don't you only get chicken pox once, then you develop the antibodies and you can't get it again? Right. But most people are getting chicken pox vaccinations which are not 100% effective like getting actual chicken pox. So then they're susceptible to actually getting chicken pox again, which is why most of the stupid um, When I was vaccine, growing up, I thought you just had to get them. Yeah, you just get them. Get a few little pits in your skin and you're done. I've seen people that's with 100%, more. That's 100%. Though, that's 100%. With more than just a few pits. Well, they deserve it because God doesn't love them <laughs> as much and they probably send a whole bunch. God's punishing you. That's right. So, my, my sister got a few. She deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Will you charge up your phone? Damn it, I couldn't learn more. I hit the wrong button. Okay, so, 
with shangles. That herpes virus. Shangles. So chicken pox, cytomegalovirus, virus, uh, Epstein Barr virus, like mono, That's mono. Uh, chicken pox, shingles, they're all herpes. The same type of so herpes. if grandma gets some shingles, you say, Grandma, so it's like cold you got sores, herpes. It's like That's cold right. sores on your nerves. It's the same Ow. virus. Chicken pox is cold sores, but it's just a different virus. And she's uh, in the back. That sounds spine. really painful. Yes. The, the beautiful thing about it, though, is shingles are 100% reversible and preventable. Curable? Boom. Not curable. Preventable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Preventable. <laughs> Pin drop. Pin drop. <laughs> so, because they are from the herpes family, and uh, that family, the herpes family, needs arginine to replicate. L-arginine? Yeah. Okay. But it need, lysine inhibits arginine, and so lysine and arginine balance each other out, especially in food. So, if you end up getting chicken pox, you get your chicken pox vaccination, so you're not 100% against chicken pox, then you get exposed to somebody and you have a little damage in a little area where you have a nerve, and then that uh, the chicken pox virus gets into your nerve, it goes to the uh, actual ganglion or the cell body and it lives there. So you can't kill it because you have to kill the actual nerve, right? Just like herpes simplex virus to the mouth or the vagina or the penis, I guess, too. Or the anus. So how does it, dis the lip, how the does it differentiate from being shingles to being chicken pox? It's the same, same thing. Chicken pox is of the skin, but that virus in the nerve is shingles. We call it a different name. When they have symptoms from shingles, though. Yeah. So shingles is going to present just like herpes simplex of the mouth or the But vagina. just on the nerves. Right. So it lives in the nerve, and that's why you'll see it only on one side, like it'll come around the ribs, but it won't cross the other side because those nerves only are right and left. Or they'll get shingles on their face, but it'll only be on one side because that nerve doesn't go across the midline. Okay. So... Things like nuts, gelatin, uh, protein supplements, those are going to be high arginine. So anybody with shingles needs to stop doing that, especially even coconut oil. They're high arginine to lysine ratio. And then that lysine feeds that, that uh, herpes virus. And if your immune system starts getting the suppressed... Arginine. Yeah. The arginine feeds arginine. The, not the lysine. Exactly. Okay. So then uh, if your immune system is suppressed like most Americans and you're stressed all the time and you're eating crap and all that, then it can start breeding and because you're consuming all the arginine rich stuff and the protein supplements, then it can grow prof profoundly and it grows all the way from the spine out to the skin and then it creates these little bubbles to then infect other stuff. So lysine rich food are things like fruit and fish. So, the things that Americans don't eat either of, but high lysine rich food then inhibits the arginine replication of that virus, meaning you stop having cold sores or herpes or cytomegalovirus like mono or shingles. So, the lady, I'm not sure who it was who said daughters got it, didn't know why, were they just exposed? So well, they probably got the, way, they probably got the vaccination for chicken pox, and then they got exposed to somebody who had chicken pox. And because vaccines don't make you 100% uh, uh, prevented like the actual virus does, then they're susceptible to getting that secondary infection. Okay. So, that being said, anybody that has cold sores or shingles or mono that's, that's uh, uh, chronic... Lysine. They... I'm just summing it up for you here, folks. They can use high dose lysine or maintain maintenance doses, or long term just eat a lysine rich diet, which is. What are some lysine rich foods? You got them in the in the back of your old memory banks. I just told you, fish you and veg fish. fish and fruit. Fish and fruit. Fish and fruit. Not vegetables. Uh, vegetables do, but they're not as high as fruit. In you the can mouth. always look up a list of lysine rich foods. But Online. nuts and meat are the high arginine rich foods. Nuts and meat. And protein supplements. So then you have these people mm -hmm. taking arginine supplements so they can get all jacked at the gym so they can sit at their desk all day, right? But all they're doing is amplifying their, their likelihood to get 
shingles. Does um, Bell's palsy, is that connected to? So Bell's palsy can be any viral infection or bacterial infection. Of the nerve? Of the nerve, of the facial nerve. Uh -huh. And when it goes through the bone, just like that. Comes through from the skull. So the brain nerve comes out to go to the eye or to the face or wherever. And if this thing gets inflamed, it's surrounded by bone. Yes. And so it can only swell on itself and compress, and then people get the bone totally locked uh... up. So you want to knock down inflammation and reduce that viral load. And that becomes a tricky thing. And that's where that primarily happens because of that opening as a limitation. Because right. you don't hear about people, I have never heard about someone palsying, like Bell's palsy, in another place in the body. Right. Well, you get herbs palsy and stuff like with a hand yeah. like this. And then you're like, hey, and then people think you're in a gang and then they start shooting and you know how it is. <laughs> so Sarah said they actually got chicken pox. So would that <sighs> have been their exposure? Uh -huh. That was before they mandated the, the vaccine. Yeah, so they might have just got it in the nerve and the skin. So. Okay, it went deeper than it was supposed to. Yeah, because you just have a break, you know, in the skin. So, like, people who have chicken pox and never get chicken pox because they have all these barriers of all this good bacteria and, and you know, again, creamy, lotiony skin, and that prevents a barrier. So, like, you can have people with chicken pox that are around other people that haven't had chicken pox. It doesn't mean they'll get chicken pox. Okay. So they have to have a susceptibility. Okay. So most people get chicken pox just because of proximity and touching and gooing and snot and all that stuff. But if it gets a break in the skin where there's some type of exposure to the nerve, then they can get chicken pox in the nerve Form and then shingles create shingles. shingles. So okay. then every time the kid's immune system is suppressed, then they're likely to manifest that unless they have a high fish, high fruit diet uh, or healthy diet and then um, low stress. So then if, but there's also the option of just taking like 500 milligrams of lysine a day mm -hmm. um, or taking high amounts when you start to feel like that little tingle of like, oh, I think I'm gonna get some shingles, which uh -huh. I got that tick on my back at that party. And I thought, oh my God, is that shingles? And I was like, why would I have shingles? But it's all bumpy and stuff and kind of oozy. And I was just like, okay, but they don't hurt Was it at all. gone? The tick was gone? No. So then uh, Sierra I went to ticks. that party with me. And so it's funny because we asked the guy, one of the guys at the party, like, where's the bathroom? And so he showed me, he said, down the hall. And so me and Sierra both walked down the hall and went in the bathroom together at a party. So it looks pretty sketchy. Oh my God. And then I was like, you have to, she's a nurse. So I was like, can you please look and see what the hell this is? Because I have this black thing on the back with all these bumps and stuff. And I was like, I don't understand why it's black. Like that's. Is it like dying? The cells are dying? Like I'm, I, I'm, It was a tick that had bored in there? Yeah. So I got. I went to meditation at the domes. I walked around that pond and was eating the flowers. And um, I didn't even think about checking for ticks. I didn't put citronella on, you know, because I was just doing the meditation thing. And then that night, I felt something like sting my back. And I thought, well, I don't know. It's just like whatever the hell that is, like dry skin or something. But... Um, and then five days later, I'm, I rubbed my back against the door and all of a sudden there was this big lump there. And I was like, what the hell is this? And so then I, uh, I tried to take pictures of it with my camera, but it's just out of reach, you know? And so then Sierra is looking at it and she's like digging around and it doesn't hurt at all. And so I, uh, I said, what the hell is that? Probably a nest. Because it wasn't even bleeding skin. or anything. And uh, she said, I think there's a tick but we didn't have any uh, uh, tweezers and she wouldn't dig it out with a knife, you know? So we had to go around the party and find tweezers from somebody, right? And finally found a mom that had tweezers and she not only had tweezers, she had two tweezers and she put them in her purse specifically that night and she not, wasn't sure why she did it. She just felt like I need to play with the tweezers. So that was kind of cool. It's the universe And so then we get the tweezers out. And then the bathroom upstairs is used, so then the guy says, hey, there's another guy says there's a bathroom downstairs. So then me and Sierra both go downstairs again, and this person watches us, and then uh, she starts digging around in there, and she pulls out that tick. Was it still alive? Okay, so A, it was still alive, but there was no blood in that tick yet. My body is so healthy and so strong that it basically like inflamed and walled out that freaking tick. It could hit blood after five days. It still days. got in. Five days, yo. It's not like you have skin of steel. You're still like the rest of us. Shh. 
I don't know. Ticks are the most disgusting thing ever. And she was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. Oh, I got it. And she got it. And it was this little tiny tick. And it wasn't Lone Star. All um, of God's creatures were not meant to exist. That's right. Ticks so, being one of them. So, then she ate the tick to get the tick's power. Sierra, I'm sorry. That's not true. <laughs> I'm sorry that he's so full of it. So then we flushed it. I took pictures <laughs> of it in my hand, of course, and then we flushed it. But that's pretty amazing that five days that that tick could not find any blood whatsoever in my body. But your skin was like a Venus flytrap and it just trapped it, it in there. It probably opened up and was like, I encourage ticks. <laughs> like it's trying to eat and digest the tick. <laughs> So then Sierra put the tick on her and said, we're blood brothers. <laughs> now we both have... I would have been out. What'd she say? Out. You're irritating. You're irritating. I know. Why are you taking your glasses off? What's going on with your eyesight? Because when they, I got these from Parker <laughs> Warby where they did this online and, and the, the... It should be here is the center. What if you're just getting old? No, because they... It, it, I have to do this. And so when I read like reports <laughs> for a patient, I have to do that. So I got to get new ones where they... they I gotta get the pupil apart right. All right, already. So, takeaways for today's show: we talked about dry skin. Dry skin. Bumps. Bumps. Dry skin is mostly water and not so many diuretics. Eat lots of fruit. The I believe bumps. that, Deb. It's true. What'd she say? You don't have a heart. <laughs> That's not true. Maybe you true. have no blood. Which means I have you may three not of them heart. in my refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> from hitchhikers. <laughs> So, dry skin, dandruff, bumps, essentially. The, the bumps, omega-3s, fish or plants. Water. And water. Water. Shingles, fruits and fish and... Hey, wait, wait, wait. Okay, look, it's all fruit and fish anyways. You want to solve all your skin problems, fruit and fish. And should you eat the skin of the fish or skin of animals? Yes, because everything you need for all your skin parts are in, in the skin. skin. What if you just eat what the animal eats, Dr. G? Then it's the same thing. <laughs> so either eat the animal's skin. Or eat what the animals eat. That's why I like to take like those potato pillars. And I just go up and I get the pig and I just like peel it off. That is enough. That's pork rinds. Ugh. People eat that. So and you get healthy pork rinds at the health food store. Do you guys have any other questions before we sign off on this skin talk? Yeah. We're going to continue. What things do you want to know about in the next talk? Because we're going to talk about acne. We no, can we talk can't. about acne. I have to be giant acne because we're talking about a giant the next time. No, we still have a July. July was the skin month. Oh, next month's Gina. Yes, July is skin month. Okay, so we have a couple things you recorded last week about that we, we should talk warts. about. Warts. Do we want to talk about warts? Oh, ringworm. Warts. That's birthmarks. Good. Wait, are you saying blisters. warts or I'm just throwing stuff out there. Warts is a good one. Acne. I think acne would be a good one. Acne, is a, yeah. Does anybody have any um, any requests? Hmm. It's your show, peeps. Yeah. It's like your show, but you're not if, technically If you guys it. don't guide us, then we get way off the rails. But then again, that might be entertaining. Yeah. That's it. I'm getting more tea. <laughs> All right. So. 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 Maybe, maybe we'll talk about those things. Yeah. Vitiligo, alopecia. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Eyes really good. dyes. Ooh, that's a good one. That's styes. Oh, Let's talk about this. those. You gotta write it down. Styes. I'd write it down, but I'm not very good at writing stuff. You'd write it down, but you're not that writing. organized. So okay. I got a sty in my eye. What's the rest of that poem? I don't know. Well, my mom may have been making up stuff. So last time we did have a few other requests. Okay, Skin wait. elasticity. Yeah. Strawberry moles. Ah, stra strawberry angino angiomas. Age spots. Age spots. You want to address any of those before we go? No, those are pretty long ones. Skin elasticity, like the crepes, crepe, 
crepe paper? Crepey skin, like crepe paper skin. That's vitamin C. Vitamin C and water. So you're back to eating fruits and vegetables and drinking lots of water. Wrinkles. That is oxidation. Ooh, wrinkles. Yeah, we'll talk about that with aging gracefully. Same thing with age spots. That'll be aging gracefully. Is that the next the week? The only writes upside down. Like, that's true. I know. Um, wrinkles. Let's talk about wrinkles next time so she doesn't have to wait till December. What about crinkles? <laughs> How about crinkle cut french fries? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'd like to talk about. Um, crinkles, no, yeah. Yeah. We already talked about that. I don't know. Okay, we'll crisscross melanoma off. Crisscross applesauce. All right, so that's pretty crisscross good. Crisscross dry skin. Yes. Okay, so wrinkles and styes next week. Acne. And if anybody knows the rest of that, like, did your mom say you got a sty in your eye and blah, 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 and, and a all piece rhymed? of moon in the pizza pie. <laughs> your eye in the sky oh, is a pizza. That's a... That's a moon. It's your sea. eye like a, a big a pizza, pizza pie. pie. That's, That's a more... Eh, mono povera bambina mlare. All right. We're going right. to go because we're just farting around right now and yep. don't really have anything else to impart. Scars. S scars. What about scars? Like emotional scars? Like how we... How we make them better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a good one. Styes, wrinkles, and scars. Next week, same time. Boom. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for attending our show um, next week. Um, keep posting your questions. Uh, I know a lot of you guys watch this offline, so still post your questions, and Holly will answer all those. And if she doesn't, you can blame her. It's his show. Damn it. All right. Goodbye. Don't touch that. Don't touch that button. Where was my?